So there's almost a 100% chance you've never before asked yourself the question, what is the butt reader? That's because you've probably never heard of it. But we're going we're gonna to answer that question that you've never had. So to understand this invention, I'm going to have to start by telling his story. Now, this story is set in the very specific time of a long time ago, where a man comes up to you, right? And he tells you he has this grand new idea. And he explains that he's going to take a little clay tablet, and he's going to make a whole bunch of little squiggles and squaggles on it, and mark it up in all sorts of funky ways. And then he tells you that later, someone, maybe even you, is going to come look at it. And just by the very act of looking at it, you're going to, in your head, be able to hear him talking, even if he is long dead and no longer there. Now, of course, at the time, you would probably have just thought he was completely nuts. Of course, you would have no way of knowing that over the course of the next thousands and thousands of years, this thing he called Squiggles on a Clay Tablet would become the hottest new invention of literally all time. Of course, it would take on the much more serious name of writing, but that's, that's beside the point. Next, we've got to talk about what are phonemes. Phonemes can be thought of as the building blocks of speech. So in English, there are about 39 unique sounds that make up the entire language. If you just play a sequence of these sounds one after the other, you can make basically any word in the entire English language. So for example, the word butt reader, right, would be what's right here. So these special characters are, instead of an actual alphabet, they're a phonetic alphabet where every set of characters represents one unique sound. Um, and it's just really important to know for the purpose of the butt reader that there are 39 of these unique sounds. So your brain is very good at recognizing these speech-like patterns of phonemes, even when there's no actual speech occurring. This, this would be the example of when you're reading a book, your, your brain interprets what's on the page as somehow being some version of speech, even though there's no sound element involved and there's definitely no one speaking to you. So, to get to the actual question, what is the butt reader? So as a device, the butt reader is a bracelet that goes around one of your hands, and in this bracelet, there are about six um, small motors that look sort of like this. These aren't motors in the traditional sense. They're more like the motors that are inside your cell phone that you apply a current to them and they, they start vibrating at a pretty, pretty set frequency and power. But the interesting thing about the way the butt reader vibrates these motors is it tricks your brain into thinking that speech is occurring, and so you get that same sensation of speech going on in your head, and so you can transmit anything that can be spoken to you. So the way this works is that since there's six motors in, in the bracelet, and each motor can either be on or off, two to the power of six is 64. So there's 64 different combinations of all the motors being either on or off or what. So since 64, if you've taken any math, is probably bigger than 39, you can represent each English phoneme with a specific combination of on or off. And so you can train your brain to associate each phoneme with each combination of motors. So as in the previous example, we have the word butt reader. So to transmit butt reader, this is just a theoretical example, your on-off states for all the motors might look sort of something like this. This is just, of course, I've been far too lazy to look up what the actual specification is, but it'll look sort of like this. So all in all, the butt reader is somewhat similar to the pathway for writing, where instead of information coming in from your eye, it comes in from the bracelet. But then after that, they both generate sort of the sensation of speech, right, which is then reinterpreted by the brain into information and communication. So it, it's a very similar process, just through a different initial input. So you may be asking yourself, well, this sounds great, but where does it go from here? And of course, the answer to that question is, well, I don't know, but I'm going to try and make it work. And so, yeah, if, if you're really interested in it, I'll probably be making a video in somewhere between, you know, a week and a month, possibly even a year, where I sort of detail the actual working prototype as it stands right now. Well, I shouldn't call it a working prototype because it doesn't work, so, you know, it's kind of deceptive. But also, if you're interested in the, the theoretical concepts of what I've described here badly, uh, you, you can look in the description and there will be a U.S. patent number, which you can then look up on Google Patents and get very confused at. And so then I wish you the best of luck and all that. So I guess with that, then, um, yeah, see you in the next video if that 
becomes a real thing.